second. But as a Arsenal ladies player, I have to ask you, <laughs> first and foremost, about Arsenal, about Arsene Wenger. He was very keen on the women's game, and I know he, he, yeah. he gave a lot of encouragement to the Arsenal ladies. How do you feel about the pressure he now finds himself under? Um, well, yeah, he, I mean, he's obviously under pressure, and um, I think the club's under pressure, and I think it's something that not one individual um, needs to be, be looked at and scrutinised. I think it's, it's the club need to, to make some big decisions, and I'm sure um, that, will, that will happen at the end of the season. But for now, I think everybody needs to, to stick together and massive game on Saturday in the quarter-final of the FA Cup, and the team nearly, really needs to, to push on and start getting some wins. What do you say to the fans we've just seen, then, who are protesting, they want him go, he says he's done his time 20 years, are you with them or are you against them? No, I, I just, you know, what's the alternatives? What, I mean, what, what is it they, that they want? Are we protesting because there's cameras there and we're protesting? Or, you know, what are the reasons? And I'm not saying that, that, that anybody's doing it just because they want to get on TV, but, you know, what is it that the fans want? I think there needs to be solutions. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's down to the club. Arsenal Football Club is, is running a certain way. Um, Arsenal is that the issue? It's running a certain way. And they've built the new stadium, they're very successful financially, but have they lost focus on actually what is going on on the pitch a little bit? Is that what you're you, alluding to? Well, but you can't blame, surely, Arsene Wenger for that solely, and that's where it seems that the fans are protesting against Arsene Wenger. I think it needs to be... The whole situation needs to be looked at um, which no fan, I won't know, you won't know, because we're not inside the club and, and there are things that happen inside the club that, that none of us will, will understand and know and that's why I think the decision needs to be left with the club but it really needs to be that the supporters and the team and everybody, the staff, the players, you know, really focus and, and, and look to bounce back and bounce back quickly and get some wins. OK, we could talk for a long time about that. Let's talk about the She Believes Cup. England beating France, beating the United States. Let's start with England and their performance at the She Believes Cup. How far are they, away are the England women's team from being world beaters? Um, it's, it's a good question. It's a tough one to call, to be honest, because um, the She Believes Cup, I mean, it's fantastic to be there because you're only invited if you're one of the, the top teams um, in the world. So for England, years ago, they would never have been invited. So that, that shows how much uh, the side has improved and how much women's football in this country has improved. Um, but in saying that, the, the, um, the team are not in season. Uh, they're still in, in pre-season. So the French team, the German team, they're all in season. They're all match fit. And I think when it comes to the latter stages of the tournament, latter stages of games, um, that fitness will tell. So I, I think really... The proof will be at the Euros uh, when everybody's peaking. I think look at that as a, as a, a pre-season tournament. Yeah, not a, not a true test. No, I, that I said, how so. surprised were you with France's win over the United States? Really good, really good result. I, I think the United States, they don't have the Euros to play for. Um, they're obviously going through a little bit of a transitional period where a few of their players have retired and, and, and they've got this time now where they can mix it up and change things around and, and experiment. Um, so I, I think when it comes to the World Cup, USA will still be a force to be reckoned with. OK, Rachel, we haven't got long, which is unfortunate, but I want to ask you about the state of the women's game. From 1921 to 1971, the English FA, no less, mm -hmm. said that football, and I quote, was quite unsuitable for women. This yeah. is very recent history. Where are we today? Well, I think, you know, goals that we've seen and the, the, the quality of play shows that it is suitable for women to play. Um, the sport is about, you know, technical ability, tactical ability, uh, quick decision and, and problem solving, and, and there's no reason why women can't do that. So um, I think it is suitable and, and the proof's in the pudding by the play. It's an unfair question to ask you, of course, because <laughs> the answer is a, a long one. Very, very briefly, is, is one of the answers to get more women on the FA board, one at the moment, Heather Rabat. Surely you need more representation at the top. Yeah, I think so. I think more women, more diverse um, representation. Um, I think for football to move forward, it needs to look at the people that play it, the people that support it, so we can be represented. OK, Rachel, many, many thanks for your Thank time. You. Our top story here, unfortunately for Rachel and for Arsenal fans, is that Bayern Munich have done a lot of damage. How much damage... We're yet to see, but Arsenal are out of the European Champions League, beaten 10-2 by the Germans. See you again very soon. Bye for now.